Hello and welcome to Simply Intoxicating. What a year 2016 has been. It has been a year of economic shocks. It started off with the shock of Brexit, then the international market tumbled over the unexpected triumph of Donald Trump over Hillary Clinton. But the real shock came from the home turf when Prime Minister Narendra Modi flagged off the avalanche of demonetization. Since the fateful evening of November 8th, every single day has been action packed. With the government making changes every now and then, it is only adding to more confusion, fear and apprehension. The demonetization is an unprecedented event in India in several aspects. If we keep aside the political battle, there are broadly two opinions on the issue. The first opinion is the demonetization will have immediate pain but long term gain. The other opinion is it is an economic harakiri with little or no benefit. The issue is gigantic and several aspects like legal, taxation, uh, social and most importantly economic. But we will try to touch upon the important issues and understand them in an objective manner without jumping to conclusions. Today we have Mr. Sunil Agarwal, he is a senior tax partner AZB. Then we have Mr. Ajay Vadva, uh, he is the president ITT Bar Association Delhi. And then we have Ms. Lena Kaushal, she is assistant professor economics at MDI Gurgaon. Welcome all of you to the discussion. So let me begin uh, with you. The previous government had commissioned several researches on understanding the size of the parallel black economy. The reports have been submitted but it has never been made public. One of the possible reasons could be the size of the parallel economy is so vast that it is scared to publish the report. My question is sir, what was the dire need to opt for such a radical fiscal measure like demonetization? And I also put, uh, raise another question, does it also indicate there is a complete failure of the tax administration and we were left with no other reasonable measure to curb the menace of black money? Good morning. <coughs> I think there are two broad objectives of demonetization. One was to control terrorist funding or narcotic funding and all kind of contraband kind of things of funding. The other objective is fleshing out the so called parallel economy, black money coming into the system. Now, so these are the two broad objectives. Now, we demonetization has is not the first time to happen today. It has happened in 1946 if we take a stroll down the memory lane. It has happened in 1978 and now it is a third demonetization we are seeing uh, after the independence of this country. Similarly, for flushing out a parallel economy, we have had so many amnesties, we call them VDISs. In 1965, the first one, then 1987, then 1997, then we had this IDS of 2016. So, what I am trying to say, the government has been active in trying to control uh, the black money from the system. Through the regular but measures. Through the regular measures and these measures have been uh, partly successful I would say. To my mind, uh, demonetization presently is just another move to control the black money. But terrorist funding, we, we know that we have terror threats from our neighbors uh, need not be named. So to my mind that is the object. But does it indicate the failure on the part of tax administration? <sighs> this is a larger there issue. There is a huge cost of demonetization. This is a larger issue. I would rather say that we are a country having a constitution of India and rule of law. Now, our income tax department on, and for that matter, the entire government and every department works under the law which has been created. So, the income tax department has to work under income tax act and uh, naturally its actions have to be governed uh, by that act and they have to be sustainable. There is a judiciary, there is a parliament. So, what I am trying to say, it, I, I do not believe that it is entirely fair uh, to say that it is a failure of income tax department because they are a part of the same system and uh, they have to work within the law. But all said and done, this is a good move in my view and, uh, and it has to be followed up with measures which does not lead to regeneration of black money which has unfortunately been the experience under the prior demonetization and Pointing. prior VDISs. Uh, coming to you Mr. Vadva, uh, the issue is that we are trying to make a dent into the parallel black economy, but we do not even know the size of the parallel economy. 
we are assuming that it's it's only the cash hoarded is the parallel economy but there are several forms of black money a wise person who is indulging in corruption may not hold the cash it will get converted into some or other forms besides uh, do you think this demonetization will compel people to pay more taxes to be more compliant or is it going to only incur a huge the economy will only incur a huge cost uh, yes you have a point the money is stored in various forms uh, there is an estimate which says only 6% is hoarded in cash form other than that everything is has been con already converted uh, i wouldn't really agree with it let's let's go by you see we don't have any definite statistics but the statistics which are largely agreed upon are that of course 14.6 crores of 500 and 1000 denomination notes in circulation is a definite because rbi prints it they know these are the notes in in, in circulation then the estimate is that about 7 lakh crores is the is in the form of black money mm. now if let's go by that figure it could be 6 it could be 7 it could be 8 but let's say if it is 7 now what the target is that this 7 lakh also should come back or 7 lakh in terms of currency 7 lakh crores 7 lakh crores in terms of currency the 500000 500000 now the idea is that this should the objective is that most of it doesn't come back because because it goes back to the people in the form of the government in form of dividends but the point is now that is a is a is a gamble it's a speculation it's a speculation that most won't come back what if most comes back point is that what if most comes back so i feel that uh, we could instead of just speculating that it won't come back take measures right away to ensure that all of it comes back comes back no if all of it comes back part of it comes back large part of it comes back by way of taxes legitimate taxes so that the government is richer to that extent spend more exactly rather than waiting for people not to deposit not to you deposit. know the experience so far has shown that as time progresses that people are still depositing in small account jandan account this 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 so it's finding its way the 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 black money is still finding its way crawling in again so so i think something needs to be done right away so it's like the government has come out with demonetization and at the same time it is also threatening which is actually disincentivizing the people to come for to be forced coming and deposit the money in the bank account exactly. that, that's a, that's you are saying it's a wrong policy measure uh, perhaps that's not correct that's not correct i think the expectation that people will not deposit or will burn their money is not a legitimate is not a correct expectation if it doesn't happen if the money again finds its way in through through various play and it comes back as an untaxed money hypothetically let's say 10 crore jandhan accounts have 50000 rupees each you can't do anything to them you may threaten but you can't do anything to them they are poor people and let's say if it's somebody else's money you can't go and attach their accounts now this time around you have a problem because that money has come back the black money that 7 lakh crore through jandhan accounts where government hasn't got a single rupee as tax so the government How is now left to tax that money now my my strategy would be my point would be but then uh, yes. if if you are referring to those because those would be basically someone depositing in those accounts so recently there is a i mean the in in fact today's newspaper only it has been reported that 200 crore money has been deducted and under the benami transaction act they are classifying classifying this kind of deposits as benami transaction so will that not be an act as a debtor or maybe will uh, extract the tax from that person see how many people know benami transaction the rural poor they have no idea what income tax it what benami transaction is they have no idea what you and i speak they will still go a mukhya will come and say le 50000 rupees jama karao he lives to do it absolutely consequences will follow later later who has the machinery to handle 50000 rupees deposited of hundreds and thousands of and people and to identify the person and identify who the people the cash. and you can't touch them out of the 50000 5000 maybe they own can you say i'll attach all 50000 so i'm sorry i personally feel like you asked this very right question i feel the government should be proactive and the simple way is to 
to to to tide over the guesswork of the money coming back is for example simply say the idea scheme stands extended to 31st of december so we'll discuss the idea yeah, in, in okay. times yeah. uh miss lena koshal uh, as an economist um what is your perspective on this entire measure of uh, demonetization because when it happened in 1978 the situation was quite different we had only around uh, uh i don't remember the exact figure very less amount of high denomination notes were there in the circulation whereas now it is 86% so it's that situation cannot be used as a precedent to understand the impact of demonetization on the economy i will also read that in us there when uh, the fed the us fed they reduced 30% supply of money it finally resulted in the great economic depression from 1929 to 1933 there are also examples in the international scenario that where countries like soviet union myanmar there have been great public unrest do you think as an economics i mean what could be the consequences of demonetization uh well prima facie when this policy came into awareness you know it was like everybody uh, most of us were in favor of it but eventually uh, to put in words it is like the idea should be as good as implementation true sure. so over these few days we could feel that yes there is unrest part of the country yes the urbans they are not that very much impacted because we all have a uh, hard cash in place we have debit cards and etc uh, to work with um uh, perhaps if the implementation was good it seems to be a good move to curb the black money certainly and as you said earlier the entire money is not in cash definitely it's not in cash but if you go back and see when these uh, reforms started so it started with jan dhan then it moved with voluntary disclosures and then it came to this stage so we see more of such structural reforms coming in this could not be the end of it hint is that next will be the benami properties so maybe it's a kind of a uh, it's kind of policies you know that are kind of being put in place to put the entire economy in a workable situation so being a predictable economist i see that yes there are sufferings and uh, that's what i said the implementation should have been really really good they had a uh, enough time to plan it in advance uh but still overall i think it's a good move no but when people are saying that the banks with so much of deposit they will reduce the lending rate but uh, very surprisingly they have slashed the interest on the fixed deposits on the savings rate so do you think i mean uh, how true is this i mean this prediction that uh, the this will curb inflation mm -hmm. this uh, demonetization uh again we can just predict you know uh, supposedly the entire money goes to the bank and say 10% stays with them because so, there will be withdrawals after exactly. depositing it will be followed by withdrawals 90% is withdrawn. withdrawn only 10% stays with the and bank that will be the actual net uh, the the uh, gain of the banks exactly. in terms of deposits exactly so then we work with the multiplier and see how is it going to help but these are all predictions you know you never know the entire money goes to the bank or how much stays with the bank but it seems that yes uh, certainly as what we can predict is that definitely some money will definitely stay with the bank and this move more uh, is more supportive towards the cashless economy you know then so we'll we'll discuss that exactly, issue of cashless exactly. economy so coming to you uh, it is being said this uh, penalty of 200% is not tenable under the present scheme of income tax act what's your view on this i have seen uh, media reports and some of them are being attributed to very high officials of the ministry of finance uh -huh. uh but as i understand as a tax lawyer tax advocate i see that uh, income tax act takes care of this entire situation completely and uh, i mean i do not want to go to technicalities but i would briefly refer to the present income tax act in particular section 69 a of income tax act red with section 115 be of income tax act that takes care of a situation that if somebody is depositing the cash today in bank or he is having with himself that cash and he is not able to explain its source then that entire cash is treated as the income means gross receipt or gross amount is treated as income so no deductions subject to and then is subjected to tax at 30% plus surcharge plus cesses so i uh, and now income tax act uh, works on a very fundamental principle 
that if the assessee on his own declares the income and pays the tax on it and then reports the income in the tax return then no penalty can be levied as against a contra distinguished situation where the tax department investigates the case catches the assessee and then assessee discloses the income in that case penalty is possible in this case in this case <coughs> it's only a feeling this yes, this might be an unaccounted cash but unaccounted cash must have been dis investigated detected and by detected by the department. department that situation is not getting satisfied which means no prosecution is also possible uh, once penalty uh, uh, cannot be levied then prosecution automatically fails i have now multiple questions for you first i mean since you had already raised that issue of ideas do you think it would have been more sensible to come up with the ideas after demonetization or maybe extending it so also the next i mean the question is from the common man's perspective what are the implications if someone is depositing this money into account in, in, in his account implications under pmla implications under benami transaction act also there is a lot of fear going on about the retrospective amendment so can there be a rise in the taxation rates on the amount that we are depositing so there are a lot of doubts apprehensions on the issues can you clarify these so so you've listed four ah. basic questions but briefly sir i briefly very briefly very briefly now the first is that ideas would have been better or not everything in our country goes by perception perhaps the prime minister or the finance ministry may feel that if they do extend the ideas it may not go down well with people who have already taken advantage of the ideas and offered uh, the money to tax it will tantamount to somehow you know conceding that sorry uh, we are giving you yet another innings yet another innings here the justification is according to me i have studied the ideas and so also with lots of other experts ideas took care of a situation where you had money earned prior to 2015 money is earned from 1516 to 1617 could not be disclosed under the ideas ideas no that is one technical justification it still doesn't meet the eye because one would say in, in a year and a half how could you have deposited 500 crores it doesn't but i come back to the the issue again which i raised which i which we discussed that let's assume 7 lakh crore is the black money the government feels 3 or 4 lakh won't come back now that's a speculation i believe we all believe it might come back or there's a chance of it coming back or there's a chance of only 1 lakh crore not coming back but let's say you say 45% is to be taxed when it is to be deposited and to be taxed right away you deposit and you pay a tax 45% then in that 7 lakh crore multiplied by 45% comes to about 3 and a half lakh crore 50% roughly now you are you are sure of that coming in as taxes to do what you want to with that money now do you think being sure of getting 3 and a half lakh crores or being in an uncertain situation hoping that people don't deposit their money is a better situation plus if you tell people that you deposit your money pay taxes you will get rid of all these spurious activities which are going on 30% discount you get this so much gold is at 40000 in fact this has contributed to more corruption so much of the it the commission business has has has, like has gal so put an end to that your objective was just not that your objective was to be sure that money is going to be deposited and it, it is not succeeding everybody has become a commission agent rickshaw walas are standing in the queues 10 times over 10 times absolutely so you you never wanted such a thing. and let me tell you even if you hire 50% of the population to regulate this you cannot this is something which you cannot regulate so come out with a definite proposal say 45% done 50% done your second question what happens to the, the pml now the pml is is prevention of money laundering act it is it comes into operation when somebody has deposited the proceeds of a crime so crime is a prerequisite assuming for a sake of argument you deposit 2 and 1/2 lakh cash given by me to you and eventually give it back to me now that's not a proceed of a crime it it's a transaction which can be ta tackled maybe under the income tax act we can study but certainly not the money which i have given is not a proceed of a crime so pmla doesn't apply at all no let's look at again the same situation 2 and 1/2 lakhs given to you you give me back a check or you give me back cash does the benami transaction apply 
Now, under the Benami transaction, you may say it's a Benami transaction, yes. But what does the Benami law say? The Benami law say that I have given you the consideration and you own the property. You own the property where consideration has flown from me. Now, if I had given you a check and you own the property on my behalf, Benami is there. But let's say you have only deposited cash and you say, no, it is my cash. Benami won't apply. Then Benami applies if the person who claims to be the owner is a fictitious person. You're not fictitious. Then Benami applies if the owner, that is you, who says, no, sorry, I don't own it. That's another situation. So what I'm saying is that we are... In any way in cash, there is a concept that whoever owns, I mean, it is his. the cash is the owner of is the cash. Is the owner of the cash. Unless you find that somebody else has paid. Absolutely. How can you? How can it is you? very difficult. It is a know. very gigantic yes. task. And I'm yeah. sure the government doesn't want. Mr. Modi is very clear. One thing. You know, why he has brought in this scheme is that there should be least litigation. Money should just come in. Everything should become simple because litigation breeds corruption and generation of black money. That is the mantra. Now, if you do not go by that mantra the and you allow this tsunami and you start into all this litigation, the investigation, the entire of the. And who are the net gainers? People like the us. The lawyers. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think that's, that's the idea. I don't think that should be the idea. And what is the speculation about the retrospective amendment? Yes. Now, retrospective amendment, firstly, I'm sure you can hold up whatever Mr. Modi says or his government says have stuck to it. They are very firm on their promises. And two years have shown that they have not come out with a single retrospective amendment, no matter what. And kudos to that for them. Now, here, let us say I have deposited cash in my account. It's not a crime. And I agree with my friend totally that income tax, under the Income Tax Act, you deposit 30% tax. Say it is the current year's income, there's no penalty. We have all gone through all the provision. There is no penalty at all. Now, let us say from in February, you bring out a law saying, no, no, what you did invited penal consequences. That's not the law. That's not Supreme the law. Court has said on the day when the crime is committed is that is the law. The law on that day has to be examined. You cannot hold somebody uh, and, and there That's is absolutely and penalty has the trappings of a crime of a crime. It is, it is, it may be civil, whatever one may say, but yes, it is a debt end. It's penal in consequence. So one, that you can't do that. What about Sec the rates of taxation? Yes, now that's, in, that's a very interesting. No, rates of taxes, there is no instance in the past where the rates of taxes have been, they can be. You see, after the rate, rate is determined be. on the subsequent year, but rate for the entire tax rate, they cannot say that the deposits that you made will now be not taxed at 30%, they'll be taxed at 50%. Because that will tend to a retrospective amendment. One can do that. But so that will be subject to challenge. And I'm sure they're not going to do that. So, so I stick to my, my uh, uh, layer of this thing. Do it now. Simply say 45% or 50% pay and, and come clean. And the government should be happy <coughs> with that 50% that comes. Propagate it. I don't, we don't want people's wealth to just get burnt. No way. Whichever way, whatever. Like that, anyways, it's not happening. It's not happening so far. Not happening. And I don't think it's going to happen. So, Lina, uh, I'm grappling to understand what is the economic rationale behind introducing this high denomination of 2000 notes? Is it a short term and it will be withdrawn back again? Or is does it indicate an admission that in these times of inflation, we need a high currency, a high denomination currency? Because if it is allowed to again circulate in the market, this will again breed corruption. Uh, you are very right and there's a lot of chaos going on because of this also. 2000 note seems to be a more easy way to hold money, black money as well. And what you said, like if they plan to withdraw it in the near future, no, there's too much of cost involved in that. So, and 2000 is definitely the inflation has gone up. But then uh, not for everybody, 2000 is uh, good enough to go and work out with that. Yeah, there From seems to be issues for that. Perspective: Is it not possible to survive with a denomination of hundred rupees, or let's say two hundred rupees denomination mm -hmm. note, or is it that we have to have a high denomination note? I don't think that it's compulsory to have such high denomination notes. If you see, I think all developed countries they have very low denomination notes, and they operate with that. I mean, I, I admit that their the value of their currency is much more than India's. Exactly, true. 
2000 i mean yeah, it's a question you know it's actually a question that write 2000 rupee note it could have been 1000 rupee note instead a new uh, this rupee note i think euro 500 euro has been discontinued <coughs> um, by the european central bank you know that is also to curb this illicit you know yes that's you're very no, right let, you let, let me touch upon a very the important issue of social aspect that we are talking about, I mean, we are linking this entire exercise of demonetization to curbing black money, which is actually see, the root causes in the corruption. How are we going to address that tendency to indulge in corruption? Any political, I mean, any policy measure, I mean, a policy measure at least like demonetization cannot address that question. That is the larger question. I mean, any, it's, it's open. Anybody brilliant, can answer brilliant, this question. Brilliant. Let, me, let me make a, make an attempt to answer this question. Root cause of black money, four, very quickly, one, Complicated laws, lot of discretion vested in the administrators of those laws, and then they ask for a pound of flesh. They say, "Sorry, I can I can do this, or I can do this. Give me money." That's that's one reason for corruption. Second, politics. Third, the unorganized sector, jewelry, expensive clothes, kutka. These are, this, this is the other sector, not, sorry, not the organized, but these, this is the other sector, the expect, where, where black money, then third, fourth is terror. Now, if you have to, this is a great measure. Let's say if the, the entire money does come back, and it will, it has to, I mean, it's, the process is on, it's not going to be reversed. Then what do you do next? Such that you don't arrive at a situation where you say, Five or four years down the line that you will got another 7 lakhs or 20 lakh crores as black money floating around. The answer is one. On the 2000 note front, the finance minister has repeatedly said that they have come out with 2000 notes as a matter of compulsion because there was no to other way they could have... To re-monetize as quickly as possible. There was no other way. So there is every possibility that the flow of 2000 rupee notes will come down drastically after 31st, once, once hmm. the, uh, the, or, or maybe in a couple of months, once the, the economy is adequately, okay. Then, what is the next step? The next I'm step. I'm coming to that, but yeah. I'm also wondering, isn't there a possibility in the future where uh, the persons who are engaging in corruption, they may switch over to alternative modes of indulging in corruption. They may trade in bitcoins, they may trade in dollar, or they may trade in, met in metals, bullions, instead of uh, trading in uh, currency because I mean they might be I mean in the back of the mind there may, there may be a fear of the currency getting banned which is not practically possible but isn't isn't this a possibility? No, देखो उसमें क्या है? You have the money now let's say in the bank. So far four lakh crores have come in and only seventy two thousand crores have been distributed. So you have a huge and this is how it's going to be. Thereafter. If the government wakes up and say, after 31st March says, all right, withdraw as much as you want to. Then you again have it. And all things are not in place. You can, you can open the tab. Once you have addressed the issue of complicated laws, the issues of taxation, you know, in the GST, the corruption angle with the introduction of GST will be reduced drastically because human hand is almost gone. Now, let's say if in income tax, they do the same thing. They in say, fact, we are saying the income tax will be the biggest beneficiary of GST. No, no, yes, exactly. No, no, but under the Income Tax Act also, if they simplify, get rid of all the provisions, all these deductions, they say 20% tax. So, reduce the rate of tax. Yes, reduce the rate of tax, 20% tax, no deterrent. I mean, there, there, there's no incentive to, to, to it hold. They say, all right, people with a turnover of five, five crores will pay 1% tax. People with this turnover will pay this much tax. Once the discretion goes, the laws get simplified. There is no incentive to withdraw money to pay. You will have to do that. Otherwise, of course, it will come back. So my feeling is that they have to continue with a limited supply of currency. They should not open the taps, say as much, withdraw as much, till they have these things in place. Yeah. I would so just supplement to that. I think he's, he's very right. So I think the essential part of this demonetization should be followed up with a measure that the, that the economy should not be re-monetized with the high currency notes, high denomination notes. At the moment, yes, we know that uh, 2000 rupee note and 500 rupee note has been brought in, but we believe that this might be a short term measure to bring enough liquidity in the system. Okay. In fact, in the beginning of the demonetization drive, 
we heard certain uh, reports that in feb 2017 the rbi will come out with a high currency note high denomination note which will have a chip and that chip can be tracked by satellite i which mean that was some, some kind of a note, some kind of a, some kind of a thing uh, what i'm trying to say is that if that kind of a thing happens maybe after 5 months or maybe five, after 5 years subject to available technology then that is the right way lena you are closing remarks yeah even Very even briefly. i say that ki uh, if they were planning to come up with something like a chip or something it should have been right from the start and secondly this high denomination will definitely not be too much in circulation the focus more will be on small denomination notes and i think it's a move towards a cashless economy as well uh, definitely we know that only 49% mm. uh, banking uh, exposure we have but it's expected that the revenue that all that they generate will be used in that direction and uh, informal economy will be formalized uh, yeah definitely i'm talking about the long term perspective so we take clue from the short term wherein we we'll have some negatives but we look forward to have good growth numbers and good formalized economy going forward so you have this opinion that this long, short term pain will subside in times to come and the economy will be benefited yes i feel yes very much so let's end on a positive note and uh, i mean we all know that black money is a devil which cannot be killed in one blow but by multiple injuries and demonetization is expected to be one of such multiple injuries now the moot question remains what whether the cost of demonetization will exceed the benefit the prime minister has recently announced in one of his political uh, rallies that the country will shine like gold after 50 days let's hope that happens but these the answers to these questions will unfold only in the coming months thanks for such an engaging and uh, enlightening discussion and thank you for watching thank you